Bonus Storm, same type attack bonus, and... Hello everybody, Ace Trainer here and welcome back to another episode of Metro Mania. In the previous heat, we saw Paridon force its way through to the quarterfinals to take on its longtime rival, Miraidon. Of course, that means Iron Thorns is no longer in the competition, so we do say goodbye to Iron Thorns. But look forward to a Miraidon Coridon showdown in the quarterfinals. But now, Brute Bonnet versus Iron Moth for Heat 5. Here we go, it's Iron Moth and Brute Bonnet. Everybody's getting ready on the battlefield here. This will be a very interesting battle because Brute Bonnet is a very, very bulky Pokemon. And here comes Mega Punch to start things off from regular Iron Moth, but it is avoided by Brute Bonnet there. So over to Shiny Iron Moth to try and capitalize or follow up on that. But say goes for Flying Press for massive damage, almost two thirds of Brute Bonnet's entire HP right there on turn one. Here's an Axe Kick in return. Not very effective, but a big chunk of damage because uh, that's that one, two, seven base attack stat. And of course, this confuses Shiny Iron Moth there. And here comes a regular Brute Bonnet with Wonder Room. Gonna swap defense and special defense stats, which doesn't really mean a lot for Brute Bonnet, but means a lot for Iron Moth there, 110. Uh, special defense is now 60 and vice versa. Oh my word. Here's Bullet Punch though from Shiny Iron Moth who ignores the confusion. A little bit of chip damage there to Shiny Brute Bonnet. And over to Iron Moth while you click subscribe and turn on all notifications so you never miss a video with a little bit of payback right there. Barely any damage though to Shiny Brute Bonnet as regular Brute Bonnet gets ready with its attack. Goes for Hone Claws, gonna raise its attack, which is already scary and its accuracy by one stage. So this Brute Bonnet just became very, very dangerous indeed. Here's Shiny Brute Bonnet though. What will it do? It's gonna go for Horn Leech for some four times resisted damage and just a little bit of healing there from the Shiny Iron Moth. Now Shiny Iron Moth, I believe. Nope, regular Iron Moth. I, I read the energy drained thing wrong there. Go, oh, we get Sky Attack from regular Iron Moth there. So it's gonna attack on the next turn for some big flying type damage. Shiny Iron Moth though is confused still and it's gonna go for the metronome though it's gonna ignore that confusion i thought it was gonna hit itself in confusion but it's gonna go for ceaseless edge but that is avoided by brute bonnet there so no damage at all for the Brute Bonnet team this turn at least. Here's regular Brute Bonnet though, who's gonna go for Spark onto Shiny Iron Moth and get the Paralysis there. So Shiny Iron Moth is now suffering with Parafusion, which is a horrible predicament to be in. And now Shiny Brute Bonnet is gonna follow up with Steel Roller, but there's no terrain in effect, so Steel Roller isn't going to happen at all. Here's that Sky Attack though, which will take down Brute Bonnet. The first casualty of this heat is regular Brute Bonnet, so that plus one attack means nothing now, and that plus one accuracy. Over to Shiny Brute Bonnet to try and uh, turn this battle around. Goes for Pluck, gonna do barely any damage there to regular Iron Moth, but is going to eat its Leper Berry for what it's worth, which at this point of the battle isn't really worth it at all. So over to Shiny Iron Moth, who snapped out of its confusion and is going to go for the Metronome now and is going to go for Noble Roar, thus ignoring that Paralysis as well. Down goes the attack and special attack of uh, Shiny Brute Bonnet there by one stage apiece, so this is not looking good for the Brute Bonnet team right now. Iron Thorns, though, starting off the next turn with Present Shades of Delibird there, barely any damage that must be the 20 base power version of present that's unfortunate and now brute bonnet goes for psych up copying the stat changes of iron moth there trying to think of which stat changes iron moths actually had but here is the paralysis taking full effect on shiny iron moth there and the wonder room wears off so over to regular iron moth now with his uh, defense and special defense back the right way around with a four times effective u-turn on shiny brute bonnet there bringing it very close to the danger zone and brute bonnet will reply with synthesis restore its hp by half of maximum this could be the tide turning in this first round battle of Heat 5 of Metromania Season 13. Shiny Eye Moth is paralyzed, which is another opportunity for uh, Shiny Brute Bonnet to really put some foot, put some offense in against these two Iron Moth as the not very effective Astonish comes out from regular Iron Moth. So now the floor is yours. Shiny Brute Bonnet, what are you going to do with that? Goes for Weather Ball, which is a neutral attack, uh, sorry, a normal type attack. Not enough to do much damage to Shiny Iron Moth there, but does put it in the danger zone as Shiny Iron Moth ignores the paralysis, goes for Hammer Arm, which is super effective. Big damage to Shiny Brute Bonnet, but Shiny Brute Bonnet still has a, a little bit over half its max HP left. And now regular Iron Moth 
is going to go for Fire Blast, which will be hugely effective. Same type of attack bonus. Takes down Shiny Brute Bonnet. So now it's sponsor time. Oh, would you look at the time? It's time to remind you lovely people that you can use code ACE to save money on G Fuel. That's right, if you use our channel's code ACE, you will be able to save yourself a whole heap of money, 20% of your G Fuel order, or 30% off most energy formula tubs right now, and 30% off most starter kits as well. You can get yourself beautiful flavors like the lovely Tiger's Blood that I'm drinking today. It's a beautiful mix of strawberry, watermelon, and coconut, and it's absolutely bloody wonderful. Oh, that absolutely hits the spot. Go get yourself some G Fuel. Use code ACE over at gfuel.com. Put it in the little checkout box. Just put ACE in the checkout box. You could save 20% off your order and 30% off a whole bunch of different things. Go and check them out. See what happens. It's a beautiful thing. Remember though, G Fuel is for over 18s only because it contains caffeine and children don't need to be anywhere near caffeine. They're annoying enough as it is. And because it contains caffeine, drink it responsibly. Don't be a dickhead, dickhead. And here we go with round two. Brute Bonnet with its back against the wall right now. It needs to win two rounds in a row in order to go through to the quarterfinals. As we see Shiny Iron Moth starting things off with Defense Curl. Going to make it even more difficult for uh, the Brute Bonnet team to utilize their incredible attack stat. Over to the regular Iron Moth who's going to go for Scale Shot. Which is going to do one hit. It could get five. Two hits. Just the two hits there, but it is going to drop its defense by one stage, which is very dangerous because it's only got base 60 defense. But it is going to increase its speed by one stage, so it's now the fastest thing on the field. Over to Brute Bonnet now, who's going to go for strength, going all out offense to start. Big damage there on Shiny Iron Moth, even with the defense increase from uh, Iron Moth's first turn. We get a not very effective attack order onto regular Iron Moth, but look at how much that did, even resisted because of that defense drop from the first turn. And now Iron Moth replies with slack off. I'd say a little bit early for that because you've, you've barely lost any you know you've not lost that much hp but fair play you do you over to shiny iron moth now who is going to go for bone rush which is not going to be very effective at all on shiny brute bonnet there but would have done incredible damage to the iron moth team can you imagine with their four times weakness to ground god you could only, you could only imagine. Over to, oh, a, a, a same type attack bonus, Throat Trop for huge damage from Shiny Brute Bonnet onto Shiny Iron Moth. And now regular Brute Bonnet follows up with Zing Zap for big damage. More than half of Iron Moth's max HP there taken from that one Zing Zap. Here's a Teeter Dance though. That's going to be an interesting play going forward. Teeter Dance is going to confuse both the opponents, but crucially also Shiny Iron Moth there. So Shiny Iron Moth needs to be very, very careful because if it's hitting itself in confusion, it could take itself out of the out of this round. And the Brute Bonnet team really are in trouble here with them both confused. That could be the end of their Metromania journey right here. But what's going to happen? Shiny Iron Moth now ignores the confusion though and is going to go for Night Days, maybe hoping to lower the accuracy of Shiny Shiny Brute Bonnet there. Not very effective, but doesn't get the accuracy drop. Regular Brute Bonnet is confused, but is going to ignore that confusion as well. And what's it going to do here? It's getting a bit desperate. It goes for Fairy Lock. That's not the kind of desperation we wanted to see, really. That's not going to have any bearing on this battle at all. But here's the confused Shiny Brute Bonnet. What will it do here? It also ignores the confusion, so no confusion for anyone this turn. And it's going to go for Shadow Sneak. And that's on the shiny critical hit, so ignores the defense increase. Down goes shiny Iron Moth there. Great play by the uh, by the, the the shiny Brute Bonnet. Over to regular Iron Moth, who's going to go for Magma Storm for some big damage, I'm imagining, because it is same type attack bonus and super effective. Down goes shiny Iron Bonnet. Iron Bonnet? Brute Bonnet. Count how many times I've said Iron Bonnet. I feel like it's been a few, actually, in this battle. So regular Brute Bonnet. Fully confused. Going to ignore it, though. Going for the metronome. What will it do? It needs to do something. Goes for Thunderfang. And down goes Iron Moth just like that. It's an equalizer. Brute Bonnet has brought this to a third round. So either of these teams, one of these two teams, is going to the quarterfinals. But who is it going to be? Make sure you've locked in your guess in the comments and then edit your comments to tell me if you are right or wrong. Uh, here's Minimize, though, starting things off from Iron Moth. So increasing its evasiveness by two stages. That's very dangerous to start things off. And now Wild Charge for some not very effective damage from Shiny Iron Moth onto Shiny Brute Bonnet there. And a little tiny bit of recoil damage. Here's regular Brute Bonnet, though, going to start off round three with Encore. That is a fail. That's very unfortunate there. That does not work in these metronome battles. And over to Shiny Brute Bonnet. Who's going to go for Flash Cannon? Not very effective damage 
on Shiny Iron Moth there. Barely any damage at all, but does get a special defense drop, which is going to be very crucial going forward. Any defense drops are going to be very important in this battle. Here's no retreat, though. Speaking of drops, here's an increase. The Omni Boost, the guaranteed Omni Boost from no retreat. Attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed all up one stage for regular Iron Moth there. That's a great play. That's got some dangerous special attack now. Iron Moth special attack is base 140. And with plus one, 50, that's like, what, base 210 off the top of my head? Here's Echoed Voice, though, from uh, Shiny Iron Moth onto regular Brute Bonnet. Thank you very much, Liam. Insert brain. And here is Bulk Up for an increase in attack, which is terrifying. And defense by one stage apiece from onto the uh, the regular Brute Bonnet there. And now Shiny Brute Bonnet is going to go for Cosmic Power and increase its own defense, but also its special defense, which will help it against that beastly special attack start of the regular Iron Moth there. Speaking of, it gets ready with its own Metronome and goes for Rock Smash for some chip damage, but super effective nonetheless, and gets the defense drop, so puts uh, Shiny Brute Bonnet's defense right back down. Shiny Iron Moth, though, is going to go for Slack Off, which I think is a bit wasted at this point. What is it with this Iron Moth team and using Slack Off at really inappropriate times? Well, at least it's Slack Off at inappropriate times and not... I'll let you fill in that joke. Here's Withdraw, though, from Shiny Brute Bonnet. Going to put its defense right back up. It's going to say, no, I'm having my defense at plus one. Thank you very much going forward. How dare you try and stop it? And here is Toxic Spikes, which is another wasted turn. And regular Brute Bonnet really struggling here to, to do anything of note with its stupid moves that keep on, you know, not having any bearing on the battle. Here's Sand Tomb, though, which is not going to be very effective from Iron Moth onto Shiny Brute Bonnet there, but it is going to damage Shiny Brute Bonnet at the end of each turn, and that could be a death sentence for Shiny Brute Bonnet. Here's a not very effective Astonish. Little bit of chip damage. I think it did a whole hit point of damage there from Shiny Iron Moth onto Shiny Brute Bonnet, who fires back with Grassy Glide, but it's avoided by the plus two evasiveness regular Iron Moth there. So that minimize on turn one really coming into play. And here's Rest. Okay, sure. A Rest from regular Brute Bonnet. It's going to restore its HP by 22 hit points. And then go to sleep for two turns. So good luck, Shiny Brute Bonnet. You're doing all the work now. And as, as you are damaged by Sand Tomb there, and now Iron Moth starts off the next turn probably feeling very confident as it goes for a not very effective Frenzy plan, which doesn't do much damage, but does put Shiny Brute Bonnet in a much more dangerous position than it was in before, especially with that Sand Tomb ticking away. Here's a Psy Beam, which of course the Brute Bonnet team are immune to as Dark type, so that's not going to do any damage, which gives an opportunity for uh, Shiny Brute Bonnet to try and do something. Goes for Dreamy on Pokemon that are not asleep, so well done. Way to capitalize. Regular Brute Bonnet with its guaranteed first turn of sleep, and there is a guaranteed second turn of sleep in the waiting. There's the Sand Tomb damage, bringing Shiny Brute Bonnet closer and closer to that danger zone. Regular Iron Moth has to recharge after the Frenzy Plant, so now Shiny Iron Moth is going to be the only Iron Moth moving this turn. Goes for Flatter. Interesting play there, so it's going to confuse once again the Shiny Brute Bonnet there, but increase its special attack by one stage. I, like... I guess that is that could work in their favor, I guess. Shiny Brute Bonnet, though, is confused. Is it going to hit itself? No, it's going to go for the Metronome. It's going to ignore that confusion completely and is going to go for Flip Turn, which will be super effective. Huge damage. More than half of Shiny Iron Moth's HP goes there on that one Flip Turn. Regular Brute Bonnet, fast asleep once again. Should be waking up next turn as Shiny Iron Bonnet goes into the danger zone there off that Sand Tomb damage. Uh, Iron Moth goes for Rising Voltage, not very effective on regular Brute Bonnet. I'd have gone for the Shiny there, could have taken it out right then and there. Here's Shiny Iron Moth, though, who's going to follow up with Aromatic Mist, which I believe raises special defense. Yes, yeah, special defense up one stage on its ally Pokemon there. Regular Brute Bonnet is going to wake up, though, and get that Metronome ready. I hope it's feeling nice and refreshed. Goes for Acid Armor, increasing its defense now to plus three after that bulk up earlier. So that is a, that's a great play right there, especially considering Shiny Brute Bonnet here is in a dangerous position as it hits itself in confusion. And the Sand Tomb damage is there. So we're down to just one Brute Bonnet. So that Acid Armor was a very clever play by regular Brute Bonnet there. What's the next turn going to bring us as Iron Moth gets ready with the Metronome? And it's going to go for Earthquake, which is four times effective on its partner, Pokemon. Did that... I did knock it out. Wow. Thank you for the glitch there, Pokemon. Didn't even see the HP bar go down, but down goes Shiny Iron Moth. So we're down to one versus one. One of these Pokemon is going through to the quarterfinals. Regular Brute Bonnet goes for Infestation. What a great play there. 
Oh my word. So the infestation is going to chip away at Iron Moth for the next potentially eight turns. But of course, it all depends on what damage Brute, Bo uh, Brute Bonnet inflicts on it going forward. Here's an Ice Hammer though. Not much damage at all because of that plus three defense there, but does drop the speed of Iron Moth. So over to Brute Bonnet now. What will it do here? It's physical attack is at plus one, remember. So Icicle Crash, even not very effective, still does a big chunk of damage there to Iron Moth. And there's the infestation once again. Iron Moth has lost almost half its HP already now since this Brute Bonnet woke up. And here's the Swagger. That's a dangerous play. Brute Bonnet is now at plus three defense, but also plus three attack. But it is confused. It could hit itself in confusion, which would be devastating. But plus three attack is terrifying on a Brute Bonnet. It does hit itself in confusion and brings it down to less than half its max HP. But there's the infestation damage still ticking away on Iron Moth there, who starts off the next turn. What's it going to do here? It's going to go for Horn Drill, hoping to end things with a one-hit KO move. But, of course, that 30% accuracy really not helping. Regular Brute Bonnet is confused. It's going to ignore the confusion this time. If it gets a physical attack, this thing is going to be over. Goes for Healing Wish, which is going to fail because it's a metronome battle. So that's really unfortunate. But there's that. There's that infestation. Brute Bonnet only needs a couple more turns as Iron Moth gets ready to fire off Hyper Beam. So it's not going to get any more turns because that's a plus one special attack. 140 base power, uh, Iron Moth. With a hyper beam, that was incredible. The Iron Moth team are going through to the quarterfinals. That was an incredible back and forth, neck and neck near the end. That was really, really fun to watch. And now, as you see, they're through to the quarterfinals. Their opponent next week will be determined. It'll either be Sandy Sharks or Iron Jugulus. And of course, before the video ends, let's just say a quick thank you to our wonderful Ace Trainer Ultra XL members who are Bro Metapod, Purple Dragonair, Ghost Lupin, Andros LeFay, Sin City Yeti, Gamer Guy Mike, Mumbai Cobra, Gia Overlord, Toy Bonnie, TJ the Nerd, Night Angel, Lucas Gates, Kingly Gamer YT, and Viridian Folk. Thank Thank you all for your massive support on this channel. And that'll do it for another episode of Metromania. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. If you're new, hit the subscribe button. Share the video with a friend. Become a member to massively support the channel. And use code ACE to save yourself money off G Fuel while also supporting the channel. And of course, come and check out my live streams. Love to hang out with you all. But until next time, I'm Ace Trainer Liam. Keep on training.